Hello and welcome back to Practicum's channel. So today our topic of the day is the impact of tech impact of technology on society. So we're going to get our creators in here and have some conversations around that. It's going to be a very interesting conversation today. I'm really excited to get started. Um, so we'll kind of wait here for, for the rest of the people to jump on and join and then we'll dive into some conversations together. I'm very excited for this one today. It's also very nice, um, which puts everybody in a good mood for the day. So that's a great way to start our Wednesday afternoon. Hi, Ziad. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. How about you, Olivia? Good. I'm just going to turn up my volume a little bit so I can hear everybody. Um, I was just telling everybody that our uh, topic today is the impact of technology on society. I'm really excited. I feel like this is going to be a very interesting topic that we're going to discuss today. So mm -hmm. if you haven't already followed us. Hi, Dweez. How are you doing? Good, very good. I was just telling everybody um, what our topic is for the day, and that's going to be a great conversation. Um, and for those of you that are new to our channel, make sure you follow that button, uh, click that follow button on our profile because we have great information from our creators, and we do this every Wednesday at 10:30 a.m. PST. So we'll jump right into it. Um, if let's uh, everybody mute and unmute themselves because we're having those issues again. So I'll do it myself here just to see if it's working on everybody's end and then we should be good to go can we hear this now and ziad as well <laughs> Ooh, i wonder why that happens every time i don't understand yeah it's weird i'm gonna say yes if if anybody can't hear us please feel free to drop it in the chat and we'll adjust on our side um so the first question is obviously um how the how has the impact of technology changed people's lives in general so it can be anywhere from like the calculator example that we were talking about last week to chat gpt today so you just want to touch a little bit on that i'll start with ziad and go to tweez um yeah i i think personally um the biggest thing that i see is when it comes to social media um when you look at like how tech has really changed people's lives from like 20 years ago to um, to nowadays, um, it's really been the ability to just like connect with people online that's driven a lot of the other technology uh, impacts as well. But um, I would say that like, you know, for me personally, being able to uh, connect with people online, whether it's like my friends or just people that I meet uh, over the internet has dramatically changed the way like I think because, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you get exposed to online that you just wouldn't be able to if you only interacted with the circle in your life. Um, and, you know, like, I got into software engineering because I was seeing like, you know, other either older friends like going into tech and seeing that happening on like professional social media. And for example, a way of thinking that way. So I think that, um, yeah, like social media has definitely had one of the biggest impacts. And that will continue to have a impact on the way of that. I think that's the first thing that I feel like we all kind of grew up with it. Um, but it is technically a new piece of technology. So very interesting point yeah. there. Um, Dweez, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, I think um, I agree with uh, with what Ziad says, especially the social media part. I I just feel like our just our worldview is shaped. It plays a huge role in how it it shapes your views and perspective on things. For example, yeah, you you just have algorithms and things like that, and if you have a specific topic you are into, you start seeing more and more content about that topic. So yeah, I think it definitely has has played a huge in, in, role in how society has developed in general. Um, you can go even further with like yeah, we spoke a lot about like smart devices and things like that, and you have electric cars. And when we say technology, we mostly think about the present day, which is right now data driven and a lot of computing and um calculators were involved in the process but to me it starts even before that like at the industrial revolution already when we we invented the steam engine i think that already was that was a starting point in which society developed into what it is today 
So yeah, definitely it has played a, a huge role in how society has shaped today. And I'm curious to see how it will further develop. Definitely. Honestly, like that's awesome that you brought up even back to that um, industrial revolution, because that did really shape like how we're, we're going today. Um, even back to like the telephone, like if whoever invented that did not invent that, we wouldn't have probably iPhones today. Um, I will always find like how crazy it is that like Bluetooth is um, I guess I would find that's very cool that we even have like technology like that that are able to send signals super far. So, um, so we'll dive into a little bit on how um, technology has changed companies' lives, and I'll just go through like a couple things. So the first one is how has a technology changed companies' lives with the hiring pool? Um, we'll start with Dweez and go to Ziad. We'll flip flop. <laughs> Could you um, explain what you mean with hiring pool? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, definitely. No, that's okay. So like um, the talent. So like for example, the example that I would think of is um, that now. Uh, companies have access to people around the world via this entire just in their um, little area or little town that they're in. Yes, and so in regards to that, I think you have uh, companies have more options in regards to who they want to hire, and it also gives a lot of people more opportunities to work. Like technology made it like. Nowadays, it's entirely possible to, to work remote, right? Like, after, I feel like after COVID, it really became a thing. Before that, it was like, no, you go, you have your typical day, you go to the office. But I have friends that, like, go to the office maybe once a week now, and they spend their, their most, most of their time at home. It depends what you do, though. Like, um, in this specific instance, they're researchers, so that can be done at home as well. But I think, yeah, you have like uh, video conferences and a lot of these these software tools that are really useful for for having online meetings, for example. Um, yeah, I think it, it it made it like it made it possible for companies to hire people that they normally wouldn't be able to hire. Um, so I think that's all. It, it's a great benefit for everybody. Definitely. Ziad, I'll pass it to you. I'll repeat the question here. Um, how has technology changed companies' lives with the hiring pool? Yeah, I mean, um, Dwee's obviously touched on the aspect of working remote, but I think that there's also a lot of technology that companies use to run to run their um, like recruiting processes, I guess. Uh, like, for example, um, I, I keep seeing companies come out uh, recently, like startups and stuff like that, that... Um, specialize for example in doing like international payroll for example and that's like a piece of technology right like they um they basically uh allow you to be able to like handle all the rules and regulations and tax laws and stuff like that around paying people from around the world so that makes it so much easier for a company to like you said actually hire people from instead of just from like the us or canada now they can hire people from uh you know like places in europe places in uh in the in like eastern asia and stuff like that so it really opens up the talent pool uh, for companies, but it also gives just like a lot of people around the world opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have had. Um, like for example, recently, if, you've, if you're following just like the engineering industry as a whole, um, the country of Poland recently has been like one of the really high, um, high, high rising, like engineering talent pools. Like a lot of companies now are hiring a lot of Polish people due to, um, you know, like they have, they've proven to be like really strong software engineers. And also it's like cheaper for companies to pay people in certain European countries versus then to hire someone in like New York or California or something. So, um, yeah, like pieces of technology like Zoom or like the HR management um, uh, software tools that let companies do that have really opened up the door to, um, you know, like just companies hiring better engineers, you know, like when you have 8 billion people around the world, like the best engineers are not only located in like the state of California, you know, like they, there's definitely like really good engineers also around the world. So I think as a whole, it'll make the industry just like more rich and diverse which is always a good thing and you'll also just like get better talent and better engineers you know so 
Um, in addition to giving people lots of great opportunities. Like I, I know, you know, 10 years ago, people that were engineers and stayed in Poland didn't have the opportunities, for example, that they had uh, today. Uh, similar thing to like uh, in the uh, mid 2000s, like India was kind of the similar like trend. Like a lot of companies were hiring people out of India because of the, like they were, they had a lot of talent over there um, and they were cheaper to hire than they are to hire like in the US, for example. So um, I think over time, like it's a good thing to push towards, you know, to hire people from around the world and use technology to help with that. Definitely. That was a great overview answer. I feel like you literally touched on every single thing that you could have. So thanks for sharing, Ziad. Um, thank you so much for the gifts too. Um, so we are here every Wednesday at 1030 a.m. PST. And if you like our creators answers that they're sharing, feel free to toss them a gift and make sure to throw the next question their way. Um, so the next one is um so it kind of goes into the last question so how has technology changed companies lives in the way that we communicate um and then i'll touch on the other two together after this so does anybody want to start with this one please i don't have much i mean maybe Zia can go first like sure. i usually yeah please yeah can you repeat it one more time olivia yeah for sure so how has technology changed companies lives in the way that we communicate Okay, yeah. I mean, this is, if you look at technologies like Zoom and Slack and stuff like that, they've definitely added more, um, uh, like asynchronous ways of communicating for sure. Like my, my dad worked in tech as well. And I know that like, I remember as a kid when he would work from home sometimes, like everything would be done over email, you know, like things like Slack or Discord didn't like exist at that point. So like to communicate with someone was, much, much harder of a task than it is today. Um, just because like you had to, like, it, it's kind of weird. Like when you email someone, you have to think more about like what you're going to say versus when you're sending someone a quick Slack message, it's kind of like you're talking to them in person. Um, so it ended up being communicate as much with people and like there wasn't as much of a collaborative environment so i think overall nowadays with technologies like slack and zoom it's just made like the workspace either in companies or within just like small projects or small teams um much more highly co collaborative so you get like more people's perspectives on things and you get um and you just have a more collaborative work environment. So like the end product that people produce is just much higher quality, I think, because of the advancements in the way we communicate. Definitely, and I feel like everything's a lot quicker. So like, um, instead of a project taking like five months, it only takes like two months. Um, so then more innovations can be created over time because everybody's just communicating much faster and easier. So completely agree with that. Dweez, do you have anything to add yeah. on to this um, topic? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I have seen also like, a web apps that companies can use like it's a workflow thing like they use um, different applications to train their employees as well through videos or like there's tools that you're just their automation tools basically so you turn them on and they record everything that you do on the screen like they take the step by steps and uh, companies use these to train their employees um a lot of also tools that that i've seen people use like to record their screen those are like being developed they come with a lot of new features as well so yeah definitely the way we communicate has increased so much in efficiency that in, in like we have said it's work that's normally taking five hours is being done in two and yeah this is only going to keep getting better Definitely, completely. That was a great overview answer as well. And it's honestly, it's just, it's helping everybody kind of jump in and, and learn things at a quicker speed. Um, I see that we have new faces to our live stream. So um, our topic today is the impact of society on technology. So if anybody has questions around that topic, feel free to drop them in the chat. We're absolutely open to answering them. Um, and we're here every Wednesday at 1030 AM PST. So make sure you hit that follow button and follow us for great resources with practicum. Um, so our next question is, can we touch on some tools that will help improve performance in companies um, in regards to like technology? We'll start with Zian. Tools that will help. Um, that's a good one. <laughs> also loop into like any tools that will um, hinder performance. So like any ethical um, aspects here. So we, I, this is where we can kind of touch on um, chat GPT, maybe in the ethics of that or um, 
other other programs or other like obviously sensitive information is no longer being um, yeah. pushed in person. It's being pushed over emails. So that kind of poses as a risk at some some aspects, some level. Um, but yeah. that those performance aspects like Monday.com really helps you um, with the task uh, organization. So that, that's yeah. some examples. Go for it, Ziad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can I can talk about things that like at least I use at my current yeah, company. Um, so like from an engineering perspective, and uh, Dweez can agree with this, I think as well, is that like documentation when it comes to big teams is a really important thing, um, especially when you have one product that's being worked on by like six different teams and like 100 plus engineers, you're not going to be able to ask like, you know, every single thing is not going to have a person that you have in mind that you can just go to to ask so at my company we use something called uh confluence for example which is like a way to document um just like projects or document code or something like that and essentially what it is it's kind of like a little um internal library for for um for teams so like if if i work on a new feature um it's like kind of my responsibility as the engineer behind it to go like dot write the documentation for that um and confluence is like the way that that's kind of organized um so i think within companies like just documenting everything is um super important especially as the company grows um because a lot of people will like be able to find information a lot better um, and at the same time I've seen a lot of companies have issues around um, like having different sources of information which is usually not helpful like some stuff is in slack some stuff is in Google Drive some stuff is in notion and that gets like super confusing um, so finding technologies that help like centralize that information I, I think is um, is super important but then also like all the communication stuff that we just mentioned i mean that's like business 101 now i think <laughs> now that like zoom's been around for a few years and slack's been around for a few years like you should really be using those kind of uh those kind of things in order to communicate with your teams in companies so um yeah that, that's my gist i think fantastic that's a great overview do do you want to touch on anything here and just as a heads up you're on mute it looks like thank you yeah, uh, I yeah I agree with what, what Ziad said. I I also like to always go back and chat GPT because yeah, <laughs> it's a new concept. Um, it's a new yeah AI tools are just new, and if they are used wrong, it can go terribly wrong. Like, do not use AI as the tool to do your job for you, but rather than use using it as your assistant that's all i have to say on that topic perfect that's great i love it <laughs> regarding um, the ethic regarding the ethics yeah like yeah that's again it's it's a very uh, right now it's difficult to say for me to say anything about it but i'm pretty sure it's going to be well, something we will discuss a lot in the future so yeah, yeah for everybody hop in our life yeah, especially on like the AI and stuff like ethics is such a big thing. So um, definitely curious to see how that'll unfold. For sure. Yeah, it's so like that's a whole new my... research field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Completely. So that's actually my next question is about ethics um, with technology that's come out nowadays. Um, I don't know if we should talk about like the ban on TikTok because I don't want to be banned from this live if we're <laughs> talking about that. It's very relevant though, because that's like a huge thing yeah. that's happening. Um, but the, so the question is, and you guys can take this in whatever way you want and whatever way you see is the best way that you can touch on this, um, is what are the most significant ethical challenges that arise from the use of technology in general? So this can be company, this can be personal too. Um, it can be like yeah. with tools. Kind of yeah, I can definitely start. <clears throat> I can definitely start. I mean, um, for me, the clear one is definitely like when it comes to just user data in general, there's a lot of like talk about that. Um, so like w with social media companies, it's clear, like it's what data our users are uh, companies collecting from users and how, you know, how do we better, um, what's it called? Like, how do we better make our users trust us as a company? Um, but it's also interesting because from a company perspective, it's like, how do you protect your like employer's data, right? Like employees are giving their companies a lot of information about themselves, their, their household companies know like how much employees are earning They're Like, there's just a lot of information that they have. And I think that they're also like entitled to some kind of 
sense of privacy as well. Like I'm sure you guys have seen people talk about the fact that like, oh, sometimes there's my employer can like track my location at home or something, right? And it's like people are scared of things like that. And um, I think it's like a it's not as often discussed as um, protecting like individual users' privacy. So like for example, there's companies out there that um, are actually designed to protect employers employees data within a company like I worked I worked at one of those companies called Okta and essentially what they did is like um, per, allow employees to um, more securely access applications that companies offered so if you had something like slack you know typically a company will invite you to join like their slack workspace but with this with this company like you, sign up with them and they sign you up for for all of the company software essentially so you're like kind of more protected from the employer itself in case any like um anything like happens between you and the company so i it, it's interesting like i always think user data user privacy is the most important one and the thing is it's it's kind of scary because as a developer like i can see how easy it is how easy it would be for someone who you know like has ill intentions to collect like you know payment information illegally or like just basic user data about someone illegally and um unfortunately i think a big issue is that like a lot of people are just like way too trusting of any technology out there um like the fact of the matter is if you go to a website like if you just type in any website like, yeah, legally, the website has to comply by certain laws, but like they could just, you know, those laws, they could just break the laws, you know, and kind of just take your data that way. And sure, like there might be consequences for them later down the road, but you would have already been affected at that point, you know. So I think um, it's really important from a user's perspective to like realize that developers have a lot of power and you should really think about like where you enter your information and what companies you're trusting with your data and stuff like that um but yeah sorry for talking so long but user data i would say is this is the number one thing that is a-ok -okay. that was really great in depth and i always forget about user data because that is so big it just hasn't been in the media as much as it was like a couple months ago so it's easy yeah. to forget those things there's so many trends happening uh, but great <laughs> Uh, Dweez, is there anything that you want to touch on in terms of um, ethical issues with the rise of technology? Yeah, so to touch on what Ziad said on, on user data, I, I just feel like the general public is so uneducated about this. Like, we, I'm guilty of this, and I'm pretty sure you guys are as well. Like, sometimes you just agree to, to, to the terms of services and you haven't even read them. You're just like, oh yeah, sure. And every just time, go yeah. Through it. <laughs> yeah, and then you you hear some some lawsuit going on against Facebook, and then you see Mark Zuckerberg in court, and you everyone <laughs> is shocked. You know, like oh, I didn't know about that. You know, but it's literally right there, and we we I I feel like in general the public does not know enough about what is being monitored of them. Like when you're using an, an app, for example, what are the datas that this, yeah, this company is retrieving from you? We, we just don't know, we're clueless about this. Um, and these applications or these, these companies, they know a, a lot about us that you wouldn't even imagine. Like they know exactly where we are looking at when we're using the app and all of these things. And we agree to it with a smile on our face. So, I think we should add, be, yeah, be educating ourselves more on, on yeah. user data. I also want to add, like, it's usually these companies are not like malicious in themselves. Um, like, for example, like I've built apps from scratch and stuff like that, just as side projects or, um, or I, here, here's a good example. So I have like a friend, for example, who uh, his family owns like a local restaurant and they know that I'm like in computer science. So they wanted me to build an app for them. So I ended up, you know, building a cool app for them where they can order and stuff like that. And like, I do collect like usage information, like what screens users are on and um, like, just for, like if, if the app crashes, like what was going on at the time so I can like make the app better. And, you know, like my intent is to monitor things things and to make sure things are running okay and things aren't broken but the, so that in itself is not malicious but the idea is like what if i turn this into a startup and i hire somebody that has like he you know 
has like ill intentions or uh, he's greedy or some, something happens where he now uses that same data that I collected for like good purposes mm -hmm. um, for, for bad things, you know? So that's where things come from. So like on a large scale, like a company like Facebook, yeah, maybe Mark Zuckerberg isn't like an evil guy who wants to like steal your data, right? But like there could be somebody who works at Facebook that is like an evil guy and wants to steal your data. So that's why it's so important that um, the company yeah. as a whole has like measures in place to prevent that from happening, essentially. Definitely. Yeah. Wow, what a great conversation. That was just like a door to open like all these cool things. Our next question is <laughs> about AI. Um, so I'm really excited to get your guys' perspective on like the ethics in it, but I'm going to jump to the chat right now and answer a couple questions from there. And then we'll jump into some of these big, heavy, deep questions that we can probably go into real big depth with. Um, so the first question that we have is what does the future of coding look like in the long run? Yeah, I can, I can get on that. Sure. Yeah. What was the future of coding? I think, yeah, it's, it's technology. It's going to to further develop, we may or may not be be relying or yeah, we may rely more on AI for that. Uh, you can see right now already that you can ask ChatGPT, for example, to build you a basic landing page, it, it's able to do that. So I think in the future, we probably will be using more prompting along with writing the actual code. So that we use prompting in chat gpt or whatever ai tool is there and that will be like our assistant in developing um yeah software so yeah as a programmer a developer you definitely will still be needed in the future it's not like ah there's ai there's chat gpt programmers are not necessary anymore it's just that programmers will be able to work more efficiently and get more done in a shorter period of time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree. So yeah, do you want to touch on this or do you want me to ask you the next question that's in the chat? Um, I think Dewey's covered it so we can go to the go to the next one. Yeah. Fantastic. Sounds good. So the next question is, is there any way of making code easier to learn or understand? Ziad, I'll throw that to you. Um, code easier to understand. Um, I don't know if there's a way to make it easier, but it, like code itself, I think if you spend like the right amount of time with the right amount of resources, um, it shouldn't be like an insane, it's not rocket science at the end of the day. Like I really do think anybody can learn how to code. And even people who say that like it requires a lot of math, for example, or something like that, I, I, I don't think that's true at all. It's It's more about like, if you if you put the work into learning how to code, you will learn how to code. Um, it's similar to like algebra or some like really basic algebra, you know, like everybody learns it at some point. Um, so I think like definitely surrounding yourself with the right people that are going to help you learn um, is important. Like, you know, like knowing somebody who knows how to code or following someone on social media who codes or something like that is definitely helpful. Um, but then also just like building side projects helps a lot. So like if you just only watch YouTube videos and watch them and don't do anything with them, then you're not really gonna be a developer at that point. Um, but if you take what you learn and try to apply it into like a side project or something that you're interested in, you're definitely gonna, um, you're, you're definitely gonna have an easier time. So that would be my recommendation. Totally. I would agree completely with that. Um, and if you want to like kickstart your learning and get help from like professionals, we also have a boot camp. Um, so you can kind of get into different areas, but YouTube's a great place to start even just to learn the basics of it before you join one. I know a lot of people that go through say our program or other programs that we've mentioned in other lives, um, that they say like, it's really good to get some base level, level of learning before you jump into, um, like a boot camp. So you're not seeing all this from scratch for the very first time, but Definitely all levels at all different um, areas. So great answer. Um, so the next question I'll throw to both of you. Um, so what will coding look like in the next five years? And then we'll jump into our conversation about AI and ethics. Louise, I'll start with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult for me to say right now how it will look because compared to five months ago, I think a lot has changed already. So it's unimaginable to me, like how much things will change. I feel like it's exponential growth at this point. It's just the feeling I have and we were at the very beginning of it. So 
yeah, five years from now, I, I think it's going to be really different compared to now. Not necessarily the languages but that we use and the technology, but more the, the method that we use. So, yeah, the methods that we use will be more AI focused, more AI driven. But um, I cannot say how exactly it will look like. That's the biggest mystery to me right now. Totally. That's so fair. Ziad, I'm going to throw that same question to you. Yeah, um, I think with the like, this is probably a good segue into the AI conversation as well. Um, I think that software engineers are going to be really needed for like design, like system design kind of stuff, like actually seeing, you know, like we need to build a, a website that does X, Y and Z, like what is the code base for that going to look like? What's a, what's the back end going to look like? What languages are, gonna, are we going to use? Like that's going to be where the real talent of software engineering is. But when it comes to the actual like implementation and the the writing the code, you're going to need less engineers to do that, I think, than like what you do uh, today. And like people are probably still going to be writing code to an extent, but there's just so many things that can be automated now because I mean, for example, like every single website or app in the universe requires like a login and a sign up. And most people want to have like login with Google, sign up with Google, stuff like that. So like, you know, AI can kind of write all that for you, you know, like uh, to a certain degree. So you definitely won't need um, engineers to do that, you know, like, so I, I think in general, there's going to be a much heavier focus on system design in the next few years. Uh, rather than actual implementation of like front end code, for example. Completely great answers, Yed. Um, I feel like that was a really good example that you provided with us to kind of can visualize like, okay, what parts are going to be automated, what parts aren't, mm -hmm. um, and then what's still going to be around. So to, diving right into this topic, so what are the potential risks associated with increased reliance on AI technology in our daily lives? That was a big long question. Yeah. I can repeat it one more time. Yeah. Um, so the question is, uh, what are the potential risks associated with increased reliance on AI and technology in our daily lives? So I know I am already highly relied, relying on AI technology, for example, to so like build out some, some ideas, some captions, some like quick, quick copy. Um, so I know like that's like, I immediately open chat GPT almost every time and I'm like, okay, give me an idea for this and then I'll build off of it. But if you guys want to touch on some ways, like even in your, in both your personal life and your technical life, that would be great. I'll let whoever wants to start, just jump in. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely say I use it for like, um, similar to what you said, like any, any writing related stuff, like writing documentation or explaining a subject, for example, or something like that, like I'll use it for that. Um, even for like social media, sometimes like I just will not know a caption and I'll just be like, just give me 10 ideas for a caption. Right. And like, I'll pick one. And some, sometimes they'll be terrible and sometimes they'll be good, you know? So it's not like a perfect solution, but it's, um, I think the best way to describe it is like, usually when you have someone with you in real life, you can like bounce ideas off of that's what like ChatGPT can be for you, you know, like something to bounce ideas off of or it like kickstart your brain with some ideas. Like, for example, I did a hackathon recently and we made like we created a project and I had no idea what to call the project. Like it was just we couldn't think of a name. So I just described it to ChatGPT and I was like, what do you think it should be called? And it gave me some pretty bad ones. So I was just like, eh, I don't like these ones. Like, how about you give me ideas that are more um, like fun? for example or they have a pun in them or something and it gave me some, like you know it got better and better so it's something to bounce your ideas off of which is really helpful yeah completely agree with that Dweez, do you have anything that you want to touch on with this yeah potential risks well i wouldn't call it a risk but i've heard like this craze where people are using ai to make music it's crazy like did you guys it's, see it's, the Drake and Weekend yes, track? Yeah. Like, actually so accurate. Sorry, that's exactly what that reminded me of. Keep going. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's just music. Like, I already have seen videos of, I don't know, Kanye West speaking with the voice of Donald Trump. I don't know. I it's, saw that one too. <laughs> people are, yeah, so, it, like, it, 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 this shouldn't be a concern. Like it's hilarious and everything, but you, other people's work for it, like especially artists or I don't know, just people in general. You can be impersonated and 
people maybe you know you you say something or your ai doppelganger says something <laughs> and it's not even you like i just make a video of the yacht saying something absurd you know like and no one would know like that that it's ai it, it's crazy these things should be regulated i, I see it yeah. going out of hand <laughs> i just saw um so, something it was on the news a couple weeks ago my grandma of all people actually showed it to me she's like this might pertain to your work i'm like thank you <laughs> anyway it was basically like um big companies like apple and amazon being like okay like if it's real like if it's a real person talking they'll have like an information bar where you can go into and see like what the accreditation was and like when it was filmed and like just more items around it but if it doesn't have that there's a higher chance that it is like ai or or made up so um i mean we're kind of moving towards something where it's like almost regulated but still like it's just so like when that track dropped with jay drake i'm like oh my god this is so good like this is insane and it's not from him at all which is honestly insane to me just to listen to that so honestly great overview yeah yeah it's we are gonna have a lot of like legal things surrounding ai yeah i think it's also like the responsibility of like the companies behind these like open ai needs to like really be conscious of what it's doing and at least like communicate some of the risks like the conversation that we're having right now should be like between ml engineers for example or something like that so um i think there's also that aspect to it completely those are really great points um with with those items here and i feel like it's only going to get better obviously more efficient are great to have than you're going to like the opposite side of it so it's just it's really interesting um fantastic so this one so we're moving off the ai train into a couple other questions we have two more from the chat and then one more from me and then i think we'll we might be done today which is crazy um but how can we encourage more people to pursue careers in coding and technology and what are the potential benefits of um, pushing people into this uh area for society in general hmm. that's got you repeat the question it was pretty long sorry definitely these yeah. are long questions sorry guys oh um, yeah. how can I we agree. encourage more people to pursue careers in coding and technology and what are the potential benefits um, on our society? Yeah, I can talk about this. I mean, like relating to this conversation, like we've talked so much about how um, like technology has such a big impact in our society in like the last, you know, like few decades and it'll be the next few decades as well. So I think like be wanting to be a part of that impact is a pretty big incentive. Like when you think about like, across history you know like every time period kind of has like a big thing like there's one time period when you know like physics and like people who studied astronomy were just like they were the ones that were really like behind a lot of the innovations that we have today um i would say like the era behind like thomas edison and those folks like those are like you know like the inventors and the people who gave us a lot of the pieces of tech that we use today to survive right and i think the 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 current like day and age that we're in yeah, the current day and age that we're in are is like more of a like technology thing for this time. So like it's where you want to be if you want to be You're like a part frozen. of history, you know? That's so weird. I don't know if it's me that's frozen or I think she's lagging right to his me. Yeah, I I can hear Sia just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so just continuing with that thought, like I think like technology now is like the thing to be a part of and like, I'm not saying that like any other industry is useless, you know, but like, if you want to be a part of like the biggest, like digital transformation in history, then like, you definitely should learn how to code and at least like be involved in the industry in some way. Yeah. But I think it, it's, it's what you're describing it perfectly. Like at some point, um, we went from, from farming to the industry to technology, let's say like computers. Uh, I feel like humanity has evolved in such a way, and this is a bit on the side, but mm. I feel like we, we just have been evolving with technology, you know, like yeah. our evolution really depended on technology and technology can go back for me. Like when people build spears, you know, yeah. like that already was a, a huge, and those were inventions that really shaped us into how um, things are today. So. 
Yeah, it's I I think we develop with it. So yeah, what what you said earlier, I just wanted to to yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so yeah, like just... learning how to code or like just being involved in the industry, and like you don't have to be a software engineer to be involved in tech. Like there's like you know designers and product managers and you know like sales leaders and stuff like that. Like it takes a lot to build a tech company, but um. So, but like, I think my message is definitely like being involved in this industry is super fulfilling. Like right now is not the, the, the day and age where like, you know, farming is the number one thing, you know, like, um, or, or any, any of the other, um, any, any other industry. So obviously I'm a little bit biased, like as a software engineer, but, um, I think that it's the coolest industry ever. So. <laughs>